Kia ora koutou. Nau mai anō ki Warrant of Fitness. Te hōtaka e titiro ana ki nā kaupapa haora. I tēnei wiki kei te tūtaki ki a arama me tōna whānau. E kei te kōrero mō tēnei mate hiningaro e kia nei ko te pō wāwao. Mā taki taki mai. I was suicidal and everything at the start. I was ready to take down anyone and everyone. And I was, in the finish, I ended up being um, afraid of what I was capable of rather than being afraid of other people. It actually scared me. My name is Adam Ellis. My uh, maunga is uh, Mawo. My iwi is Naitirangi Nui. And my hapu is Naitukarangi. And I am a diagnosed schizophrenic. It actually started at a tangi, to be honest, when I was up north. So when I first, first started hearing voices, I was up at a tangi. And I've been, my whole life changed after that. It's like having another world around me that isn't there, and when people are talking to me, it's like having, I'll, I'll forget it all, and about two days later, I'll get a, a replay of it in my mind, all the pictures and everything. It's like having a tape recorder on replay all the time, rewind and replay. And it's constant like that all the time. 24 hours a day if I'm awake. I get paranoid about everything. Someone will say something to me and I'll take it out of text. And automatically assume that, because there's so much going on in my head. It's like they, um, they accuse me of something and it sort of doesn't compute, but it makes me paranoid. Or someone could be saying something about someone else and I'd pick up as if they're talking to me or about me and make me paranoid as well. So I'm actually a chronic paranoid schizophrenic. I get paranoid about the little things. Even if um, I could be in, in a shop and someone would look at me the wrong way, I'd automatically think, well, I'm being followed because of thieving and that, but I've never done it, I haven't done it. It's actually, um, it's, a, it's a hard illness. It is very hard. Ko tēnei mate hiningaro nei ko te pō wāwao. Ko te tika o tēnei kupu wāwao, uh, ka noho tēnei tangata ki waho o tēnei ao e noho nei tāua, uh, ka noho ki te wāo, ki waho ni. Uh, ko te he tūmumu pō rangi, pō raruraru nei i ono whakaaro. Ko te tino kōrero mo te pō wāwao, uh, ko whakararu nei i ono whakaaro. Ka rereke o na whakaaro, ko wetahi ka whakarongo ki te kōrero mo te tangata kaori i konei. Uh, ko wetahi atu uh, ko tohu tohu ngia e tetahi tangata e tetahi reo kei roti tōna ake hiningaro. I just think something in my brain just snapped at the time. Yeah. The, I think the main thing that brought it on was um, when I saw my sister, cousin in her coffin, I realised I wasn't six foot tall and bulletproof like I used to act. And then I just spiralled downhill from there. I hit rock bottom and this is where I am now. You know, and to me, it looked like someone who was on uh, on the hard stuff, eh? you know, on yeah. drugs. But... Uh, he sort of went inverted, eh? Yeah. He yeah. sort of became a recluse, eh? you know, especially when yeah. he got back home. To me, yeah. it was quite violent, quite scary, um, really paranoid. I couldn't take him down to the shop or... Uh, yeah. He was just looking around all the times, you know, someone was watching him or someone was there and yeah. talking yeah. to himself and that's what really scared me. So I put him back on the bus and sent him back to you because I didn't understand what was happening, but I knew he was ill. I see ghosts. I call them ghosts because I can walk through them and I can see them, but no one else can. They, they just start having conversations, like I hear them talking and all of that, and I don't have a private thought ever. I haven't since I got the illness. It's like someone's always listening to everything, I think. And then um, they twist it, like it gets all twisted and tangled up. And then I end up confused and then I feel empty and then I sort it all out again. And We call it my nine friends. That's our way of handling it, because there's about nine of them going all at once, eh? 
and I'll be sitting there arguing in my head, talking to the old man in them, and then I'll argue with someone that they can't see, and they sit there <laughs> and actually confuses them more than me. Ko te whakataunga o tēnei mate hiningaro nei i te pōwāwāo, ka whakararu hea i te kai taru kino, and ka i te raru te tākuta i nga kite i nga ahuatanga o te kai taru kino, me nga ahuatanga o te tohu mate nei mo te mate hiningaro. Nō reira, he ua ua hoki tēnei kia kite ko tēwhea ko tēwhea, after the first month of just hearing voices, the hallucinations came on and I've had them ever since. Other people ain't a danger to me. I'm more of a danger to myself 90% of the time. I used to look at life as, hey, each day is each day, and I used to go hard every day when I first got sick. Family never understood it. I never really understood it until I was talking to my psychiatrist. Chemical imbalance is what they call it. But I was talking to the older generations and I've picked up on something. Like in, if I was born back when, the days of the pars and that, I would have been separated from everyone else anyhow. Would have, they reckon that it would have been a tapu part because it's to do with the head. I isolated myself because I was afraid of what I might do to others. I just actually stayed home all the time, only went out when I needed to get things. That is what a coffee should look like. I went from being a um, party animal to being a recluse. It never really scared me. I was more frightened of what I was capable of. I didn't give a damn what other people used to think. I was, I was just there. I was going to dong whoever got anywhere near me. I was, um, to be honest, the best thing that ever happened was my father taking me to the psych ward. And I was, I was 21 at the time. Kua pā i a Arama Ellis te pō wawau, he kai kohi kāri te māramatia me te kaupapa pōa pōa hoki. While he was at his worst, you know, the lack of understanding is prompted to a sort of pushing him away rather than huffing him in, eh? Ko te wawautanga rata Hiningaro, te taumata tuatahi ārama ki tōna o rangatanga. Ko te tau toko hoki o tōna ake whānau, nā rātau ia i whāngai i tana taha auaha. He took me to the psych ward, they doped me up. I think they might have used more drugs than I needed, but I've narrowed it down to four pills three times a day. And that's a big, big drop for me. My body can handle it, so... If it wasn't for the meds, I don't know where I'd be. Mehe me kai te, kai te whakaaro koe mo tetei o tō whānau, mo tetei hoa rānei. Ka tika ki a haere ki tetei tākuta, te mātanga hiningaro rānei, ki a tirohia ki a āta wānanga nei nā ahuatanga o te mate hiningaro. E hari te me ngā wari he mea uawa tēnei, engari ka tika ki a haere ki te tākuta. Um, well, Dad and I sort of looked at one another and we thought it would be a good idea that we all live together to make things easier on everybody and we can also keep an eye on him and how he's going with his medication and with administering it. But he's doing really well. He does a lot of things for himself. Um, he's very independent and tries not to rely on anybody for anything. When Arama came to stay with us, you know, the, being in the uh, relaxed, relaxed atmosphere that he was in the, 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 when he cut the eye, you yeah. know, we were always laughing and carrying on, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, it sort of uh, relaxed him a lot more. And then uh, and when we started getting into the carvings and that, and uh, Aro was weaving. We sit up and yap while Aro was uh, trying to finish her quarter wise at uh, three o'clock in the morning. 